So in this video I'm going to go through ionisation energy and the general trend going across a period and any exceptions to that rule. So in general the first ionisation energy increases across a period and that's because the nuclear charge increases with each successive element so that just means there's an extra proton in the nucleus with each successive element but the amount of shielding stays the same so the outer electrons are more strongly attracted to the nucleus and because of that the ionic radius is also smaller and so overall the outer electron is held on to more strongly and so more energy is needed to remove it. So I find that the mnemonic cars is quite a good way to remember what the general trend is. So Firstly, nuclear charge increases across a period, which means that the outer electrons are more strongly attracted to the nucleus, and the ionic radius decreases as a result because the amount of shielding stays the same. So that means more energy is needed to remove um, an outer electron when you go across the period. So. There's some exceptions to this rule, so if you, uh, we look back at this diagram, uh, there's uh, some decreases in ionisation energy, so that's for magnesium going to aluminium, phosphorus going to sulphur, and argon going to potassium, or neon going to sodium. Uh, so now I'm going to go through why that is for each of these cases. So for magnesium going to aluminium, if we write out the electronic configurations, we see that the outer electron in aluminium is in a higher energy sublevel, the 3p sublevel. Um, so that's higher energy than the 3s sublevel in magnesium. So the outer electron in aluminium is further away from the nucleus and it's more shielded by inner electrons than the outer electron in magnesium. So overall, it's easier to remove an outer electron from aluminium than it is from magnesium. Okay, so phosphorus to sulfur. Um, if we write out the electronic configurations, we notice that the outer electrons in both are both in the 3p sublevel. And if we write it out uh, to show how the p orbitals are filled up. Notice that in phosphorus um, all of the electrons are unpaired and then in sulphur we have one pair of electrons and then two electrons that are unpaired. So the reason um, the first ionization energy for sulphur is lower than it is for phosphorus is because with the electrons that are paired there's some repulsion between them and so we need less energy to remove one of these paired electrons than it is to remove one of the unpaired electrons in phosphorus. And then going from argon to potassium um, the we get a decrease in ionization, first ionization energy again and if we look at the outer electron in potassium that's in a 4s it's in the 4s sublevel which is higher energy than the 3p sublevel in argon and the outer electron in potassium is also more shielded from the nucleus and so it's held on to less strongly than the outer electron in argon and so it's easier to remove it. So that's why we have a decrease in ionization energy going from argon to potassium. And then the same explanation applies to uh, when we go from neon to sodium. So if we write out the electronic configurations again we can see that the outer electron in Sodium is in a higher energy sublevel than the one in neon, and it's also more shielded, so less energy is required to remove it.
compared to removing the outer electron in neon.